Welcome to the channel everyone, I'm Scratch, this is another Dragon Air Silent Gods video. Today we're gonna have a look at Elminster Almar. I am currently on the test server, so I have access to everything that happens a couple of days earlier. We're gonna do a champion review, a guide, a spotlight, call it however you want. The main point is that we're gonna check if this champion is worth it for your account. So overall the champion looks pretty interesting. He is a support champion. He's not necessarily meant to deal damage. I'm not saying that you cannot squeeze some damage out of the champion, but honestly, I find it as a waste. So this is the champion right here. Of course, he comes together with an artifact. You can unlock the artifact by uh, uh, paying an additional 240 fragments uh, in order to, to collect it. And a guide to magic by Alminster. This is the best artifact for shield champions, hands down. Because not only that it increases the shield, uh, the shield uh, effect, but it increases the duration. So it, it increases the effect by 25%. 10% more uh, than the anti nias Tiara. And on top of it, increases the duration of the shield by 30%. So you have it on for 10 seconds. As an example, you're going to get that increase by 30%, which is actually going to be massive. Okay, it's a very, very good thing. Plus, of course, it gives you tons of enlightenment. You need the enlightenment in order to build a, a bigger shield. This is the artifact, and it's not an uh, artifact that works only on Elmister. You can use it on any other champion, Adolphus, Nathaniel, etc. Now, if you're not very familiar with Elmister Almar, guys, he has a pretty weird uh, passive, but we're going to get to that in a second. The aura increases all allies' enlightenment by 60. The passive gives him resistance. We are actually trying to get him to change this to accuracy to be a bit more uh, uh, productive for the champion rather than uh, counterproductive because it's not really going to be helpful to have the resistance on him. I'll be honest, uh, unless you're planning to build him with crazy resistance, this is not really going to help you whatsoever. You want to get accuracy so you can build him with more enlightenment or you want to get more enlightenment from here, you know, and uh, get something that will really actually benefit the champion. He is a legendary hero. He's not an epic. So you would expect to see a bit more, right? Something that's actually benefiting the champion. Then the battle skill doesn't deal no damage. That's why I'm saying you don't want to bother to build this champion for damage because it's going to be a complete waste, in my opinion. You're wasting the potential as a support. Now again here, how you may notice, he doesn't cover the entire area with the battle skill. It's not necessarily the end of the world. I feel like for Arena is going to be a bit more effective for the Pillar of Trials. For the Fey Mander, again, when you're using uh, melee heroes, when you're using jumpers or stuff like that, you know, I really wish that they would make this to cover the entire uh, the entire area. Again, it won't be anything broken, but it be it it would be pretty pretty good, you know, or at least make three three lines in the back to at the front, you know, at least to cover your uh, your entire back line. Grants a 12% targets max HP, 3000 enlightenment shields to the hero and surrounding allies for 5 seconds and control immunity. Control immunity is going to be super powerful for arena and uh, for some particular bosses, Feymander, uh, Pillar of Trials, you have quite a few, quite a few different uh, places, you know. The ultimate deals 710% attack damage and 5000 enlightenment to enemies with a chance to put accuracy penalty and decrease attack, which is going to be massive. Now, once you scroll the hero, you're going to get it to 100% uh, chance and you're going to get the skill down to a 20 seconds and 12 seconds. The battle skill will be on 5 and 10 seconds. I do have a bit of skill haste on him at the moment, so that's why I have a slightly shorter cooldown. The way you want to build this character, guys, is either on a serial set, which pro probably, in my opinion, is the best option because like this, you're going to be able to uh, put whatever other champion you had that was debuffing. Maybe you were using a... Uh, damage dealer or something from a serial set to an actual damage set and have this champion on a serial set because he will debuff with the bat, uh, with the ultimate skill, sorry. So that will actually give you the 15% increased attack on the teammates. Now, the main thing you want to focus when you're building the champion is as much enlightenment as possible, okay? Then, yeah, HP, defense, survivability. If you have some room for crit rate, go and take it. I'm not saying no. But the main priority for you should be enlightenment, survivability, and accuracy, okay? Then if you need a crit rate, if you can get it, do it, you know? 
In terms of artifacts, let's just say you don't have this one. The best artifact for him after that is going to be the Antinias Tiara. If you manage to get this, is great. If not, uh, you're going to have another option, which is much harder to get, and that is the Aurelium Vest. Of course, you can utilize different ones, but honestly, these are like the top, top artifacts for shield champions. And as an idea, I have an enlightenment chest piece. Everything has enlightenment and accuracy on the substats, okay? Uh, except the chest piece, which is main enlightenment. Enlightenment rune, and right here we have an accuracy rune. And like this, I don't need to change the artifact to something that gives me accuracy. Now we're going to try this hero, guys, in quite a few different areas. First, I do want to show you one thing. So again, check out the multipliers of this battle skill, okay? 12% and 3000 enlightenment. And his stats, right? You can see them on the side right here. If we're going to go over to Adolphus, these are his stats. Very, very similar stats. Of course, I have a bit of more enlightenment on uh, Alminster. The artifact helps me quite a bit. But the rest survivability stats are pretty much the same. And the multipliers on uh, Adolphus' uh, skill right here, how you may notice, 15% targets max HP, 3,150 enlightenment shield to all allies. Now, the one difference is that even though this is the only area that he covers with the damage that he deals, when he's putting the shield, he covers your entire map. It doesn't matter where you are as a, as a champion, so that's a bit different with Adolphus. The reason why I'm showing you this champion is because we're going to try them together and separately. He is a champion that shields, uh, and he is one of the best in, uh, in the game, actually. Right here grants 10% targets max HP and 2,800 enlightenment shield. Of course, we have a different artifact on him. But what I do want to show you, if we're going to go right here quickly, drilling ground, and I'm just going to have these two champions. Pay attention to uh, the numbers that you're going to see when the battle skill pro uh, procs. 25,000 shield, 31,000, 31,000. So the battle skill from Alminster generates a shield of 31,000. While the shield from uh, Adolphus generates a 16,000, okay? Then if we're using the ultimate from Adolphus, one second. Okay, come on, there we go, 31,000. And the ultimate from Adolphus generates a shield of 19,000. Which already is a bit strange to me because, yeah, I do have that artifact that increases the value of the shield by 10% more than the one that Adolphus has. The multipliers are better on Adolphus, so this leaves me a bit like, hmm, what is happening? You know, like, why, why is the case? I'm not complaining. I'm loving it. You know, I, I love that Elminster has a better shield than Adolphus on his battle skill. You know, he's, he's great. He's top-notch, and I'm a big fan of it. But I just wanted to show you these guys as well, so you get a better, better idea. Let's just assume, by any chance, that maybe... Maybe it's the artifact on them. Maybe the artifact makes the difference. So let's actually swap the artifacts and see how that will play out. That's something that I actually haven't tried uh, just yet. So who knows? I might be surprised. I might be surprised. <laughs> let's see. Alminster, where are you hiding? We're going to try a Vortex team, guys. We're going to try a Chaos Shadow boss and uh, Arena. You know, it's no point to take him in the dungeons. Like, you have a, a million options for dungeons by now, you know, like... Definitely not the, the main... You can use him in, in dungeons as well, don't get me wrong. So let's ch check out what shields we're generating now with the battle skills. I think uh, Adolphus will be first. 29,000. That is the artifact. When? Actually, no. Actually, no. Actually, no. So let's see the battle skill again. Was it 29,000? I haven't uh, actually had a chance to, to see it for whatever reason. 20, 29,000 from his battle skill. 26,000. So 26,000 shield generated by, uh, uh, by him here. Now, I, I'm getting a feeling that it doesn't replace the one that Adolphus already has. Because that shield might be bigger. Now, if we're using the ultimate from Adolphus now. 32,000. So it's actually the artifact that really increases the, the value of the shield by a lot. You know, like, you would expect it to don't be such a big difference because it's just 10% difference, right? But it's actually quite a bit more 
by the by the looks of it. It feels more anyway, which is again good. I'm not complaining about it. Hell no. Yeah. 32,000, 35,000. So having just the artifact as well, it's awesome. I wanted to do a testing on the artifact and on the champion, guys, because I feel like some people might be in the situation where like you can only pick one, either Elminster, either the artifact. What should we pick? If there's no way in hell we can get the artifact ever again, I, I, I don't know. It's hard. I'm really leaning like 55% towards the artifact, 45% towards the hero. I don't know why. I'm just feeling like that artifact is just too good to, to miss it. It's so unique, you know, and yeah, it's just, it's just too good. But leaving that on the side, guys, leaving that on the side, we've seen what the new artifact can do. Heading over to the Chaos Shadow boss, which is uh, Erzilas, the fire boss for uh, Season 2 in the Otherworld event. This is the team that we have running, for example, right here. Let me just load the gear. And I have a wild comp. I have a, I have Liko as a healer together with, uh, with uh, him, Alminster, to see if we can keep our tank alive. Our tank does not heal whatsoever, okay? It's not a conventional tank that actually has some healing in the kit. So we're going to have Liko for some healing, and we're going to have uh, uh, him, for, uh, Elminster, for uh, some uh, shield, you know. But let's see how it's going to, to be played out. Elminster is going to bring more uh, attack down as well. Let's put it on 2x speed and see if, if we manage to survive all the way to, to the end, you know. I love the animation of how you are getting this uh, control, uh, control immunity and the bubble on you. I feel like it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And yes, you can time them to use their uh, attack down at different intervals, but I'm just going to let them go freestyle. And the shield actually helps quite a bit. Now, in this fight, for example, the enemy only attacks our tanks. So we don't really care too much about the way we are positioning our champions. But if you are in a different fight where uh, you want to shield your entire team because it's important, Everybody needs to be in a two-tile gap front or back of Elminster if you want that to, to happen, you know. So uh, I'm going to show you that once we're going to get to Arena. But right here, we're going to be pretty spot on with this team. I feel like we're definitely going we're, we're to hammer it. I am using Liko on my account with uh, a tank, but that tank heals, you know, so it's, it's a bit different. Plus, I have the Alliance bonuses. I have my entire Psychic Core maxed. Here, I have no Alliance bonuses. My Psychic Core is not maxed on the test server, so it's completely different, you know? I don't think we're going to survive all the way to the end with, this, with these two champions trying to keep our tank alive. I just don't think... I don't think they're enough, you know? Even though I have decreased attack on the boss most of the time, I have, I have the buffs in order on, a, on a, the tank, on Kyrza. I just feel like it's... Which is not enough firepower. And there we go. We died. We died 3 minutes and uh, 20 seconds in, right? But we managed to get the top, uh, the top, top damage. And that's, that's what matters. Over 22 million. We don't really care more, uh, more than that, you know? Right here, you can see the healing that is being provided to them. And of course, I think the shield does count as a healing. But I might be wrong. On the, on the last part right here. I'm not 100% sure. I never really looked into it. I never really checked or asked either, you know. If we're going to bring a team with Adolphus. So basically, we're going to have the exact same team. And they're going to have the exact same gear pretty much. Do you guys think he's going to do better than before? So with the positioning, right? He has this skill. Uh, this one right here. You need two tiles in front, two tiles back, two tiles sides. If you have them at more distance, like if, uh, for example, you're going to place the hero here at the back, he only shields two tiles. So your tank won't get, uh, won't get the shield, you know. So you need to make sure you have him at least here. And then he's going to do this and this. But because your tank is going to move all the way to the boss, okay, you want to have him here. So he does one tile, two tiles, one tile, two tiles. The back area doesn't matter, though. So let's, let's crack on it with it. Let's see if Adolphus can actually keep him alive better or not, maybe. Now, the thing with Adolphus. We have Elminster shielding 
Adolphus bringing in his shield and a bigger healing. Personally, I think that the new legendary artifact will do much, much better on uh, Adolphus rather than Alminster. And I would use probably something else on Alminster if I use them together in the same team, you know. If you're not using, using them together, of course, you're going to give it to, to Alminster. But if you are using them together in the same team and you are able to get the legendary artifact as well, then most probably you would want to go for a... Uh, Adolphus with uh, the new legendary artifact. Just because he is replacing his shield, you know, so when that shield gets replaced, you want to increase the duration of the shield from 10 seconds to like 13 point, right? And you want to have a bigger shield from Adolphus. And you're going to have a good healing too like that, you know, so I feel like he's, uh, he's definitely more important. But we're going to do that in the actual uh, Vortex, you know. You might think he's not necessarily a Vortex champion. You might think, like, well, how, how am I going to do my team? Who, who's going to be the tank? What am I going to do there, etc. Well, trust me when I'm telling you, you can definitely fit him in your team. I'm going to fast forward from here, guys, right at the second when our tank will die. And we literally just lost the tank, guys. You can notice that Adolphus is more superior to Liko anyway. But the shield that he's generating on top of the other shield it gets so big, honestly, that the boss was barely breaking the shield. Keep in mind that this time around, we don't have block buffs on the boss. The boss actually gains increased attack. And we still managed to survive almost one minute more than in the previous fight, where we were actually blocking the increased attack, you know, which is making a massive, massive difference. The damage as well is much, much better because we survive longer. But check this out. So you have Adolphus with... 52.7%. Then you have Almister with 41.7% on the healing right here, guys. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a massive difference when you have uh, Adolphus in, uh, in the team or not. If we're going to head over to the Vortex, let me quickly show you what I'm talking about for that, for example. So, we are right here. Let's, let's go and visit you. So, these are the the buffs on the boss, the handicaps, uh, they're the same like on the actual uh, actual server. And if you guys remember by any chance, this was the old Vortex team that I made a video on, okay? And this was doing 25 million damage, barely, and that was with the extra fire damage, okay? Now, this time around, we're going to drop Isolde out of here. And I know probably you're wondering who's going to be the tank in here. Elminster is not a tank. You know what? You don't really need a specific tank for the Vortex. Like, you can use whatever you guys want as long as you're tanking the champions. They're all going to do the exact same job. Yes, it's much better if that tank heals 100%, but we're not actually going to do that. This is the team that we have right here. Megan, we have Dolphus, we have Elminster, we have two wild heroes, and my tank here is going to be Megan. Now, Megan will cleanse that defense down, will give me increased defense, will give me some extra healing, and this is what gear I have on them. Now, I'm really debating in actually modifying this just for a little bit and see how well it's going to be. Now, I already have a, a run with some pretty decent damage, honestly. I'm pretty satisfied with the damage that we got on the test run before, but that was with the builds that you've seen before. Now, I want to change these artifacts and see if having that new artifact on Adolphus is better. I do think it is. I do think it is. I do have a, a bit of a timing right here. I'm actually not timing uh, Adolphus with, uh, with uh, Almister here because I don't need to. Almister is using the battle skill. I am timing his ultimate to put decrease attack and cover three different skills. So check this out. And of course, Megan, she's there basically to... Uh, Cleanse at the right moment too. That's why she has the timing as well. But once they're gonna start uh, popping uh, that shield up and running, we're we're gonna be we're gonna be better, you know. We're gonna be better. So let's see the the numbers a bit as well, you know. So Megan will do the cleanse here. Twenty eight thousand uh, for the shields there, if I'm not mistaken. Thirty one thousand, thirty three thousand. Not too bad, not too bad. 
Now they do need to kind of like get in sync a bit with the with the shields on, you know. I only have two damage dealers, guys, so uh, I'm not I'm not gonna drop 100 million damage or anything like that. But it will be a decent amount of damage that could potentially help uh, a lot of you guys to get your top chest, you know. And with a team like this, I mentioned you don't need to bring a crazy tank in here. Alminster can do the decrease attack. Usually we're bringing tanks because we need decrease attack, right? Like that's the main thing while you're thinking of. Uh, about a tank or they're bringing some massive healing or something but we don't need a tank here Alminster will do some shield decrease attack uh, we're gonna get more shield and healing from Adolphus more healing from Magan increase defense the small version and we're gonna get a cleanse too from her and this team is going to work just fine now before Alminster I wasn't gonna be able to build something like this you know because I only had two options as tanks, and that was either Isolde, either of course we had uh, Crisis, the the legendary, the legendary one, which yeah is amazing too, a hundred percent. Just imagine if uh, the battle skill, instead of having the, instead of having the control immunity, it was having thirty percent damage reduction. That would have been just crazy, like a Faisa. I don't know why they haven't made the champion a bit more powerful in terms of uh, what he can do, like uniqueness, you know. Or even if it was not the battle skill, the ultimate. Just do on the ultimate, increase attack and damage reduction on... Uh, decrease attack, sorry, and damage reduction on all of your team instead of the decrease accuracy. That would be much better. I know these heroes are limited time, uh, guys, so... I feel like the main reason why they don't want to make them too powerful is because people won't be able to get them after. And yeah, it can be pretty unfair when the heroes are super OP and uh, there's no way for you to get it, you know, like, just think about it. You start the game five months from now and you come to the game, Alminster being the most OP champion in the game or one of the most OP and you can never get him, you know, like you're going to be pissed, you know. So I feel like that's why they're not uh, making them extremely OP. He's better than Bristol, like, Drist as well. I feel like Drist was really underestimated. A lot of people really hated Drist. But he actually offers quite a, quite a few things. If you don't have all the rest of the OP champions, you know, like you can build him as a tank if you want. Uh, you can build him with, with a bit of damage. If you have all the all the legendaries guys like, yeah, then I, I understand. Drist feels underwhelming. He's going to feel a bit underwhelming too, you know, compared to all the, the crazy legendaries that we have in the game. But they're still, uh, they're still decent. So we are at 12 million damage, stack 20. We're not doing too bad. We have that decrease attack uh, running there. Hopefully we're not going to get resisted or anything like that. The shield works perfect. Like, look at that. Uh, he's bringing it in with the battle skill. Then, of course, we have Adolphus with the ultimate skill. You can time them as well if you want. Uh, uh, that's something that uh, is, is up to you. You're going to have to delay the ultimate on... Uh, Adolphus and add up the time difference. So the initial recharge for the shield from uh, from uh, Alminster is 5 seconds. Then you're going to have to add 10 more seconds recharge on top. So that's 15 seconds. And you want to use his, uh, Adolphus's ultimate after the 15 seconds if you want to time it at a specific frame. But the thing is, you might want to leave a bit of a gap. Maybe you want to keep the shield from uh, Alminster 3, 4, 5 seconds uh, before and use... Uh, Use the ultimate from uh, Adolphus right before that shield expires. So like this, you're going to keep the shield up for the entire duration of the fight, maybe. This is kind of like the whole thing, you know. Half shield for pretty much the entire duration of the fight. And right now, with Adolphus extending the shield and increasing the duration of the shield by 30%, I half shield pretty much most of the time. Now, how you've noticed right there, because it's not perfectly timed, okay, uh, I'm not going to heal all the time with Adolphus when we are placing the shield but this slowly will kind of like recover down the line in the fight you know because it's all the skill haste that we have on the heroes I could time them and try to achieve something uh, a bit more different you know that could work as well like there we go now we had the shield you know so we're gonna have cycles where we're not gonna be able to to keep it up and running even if you're going to do what I've told you before with the 15 plus seconds, you're going to have to put Adolphus on at 20 seconds. And from there on, 10 seconds, 
he's gonna put shield 10 seconds he's gonna put shield Adolphus bang is gonna put the shield and you're always gonna catch it like that but that might be a bit better to keep the shield for the entire duration of the fight on honestly there we go we got the shield from the from the battle skill Adolphus coming in with a massive healing right now and a big shield uh longer duration for the shield as well and seems like Adolphus is my uh my target right here when he got more HP than oh I feel like I changed the I changed the I changed the artifact and Adolphus now has more HP than Megan. And Megan is not my my tank anymore. Damn it. Okay. You see, that's something that I haven't noticed that I, I've done. And the problem is that my Adolphus, my Adolphus, he doesn't have uh, a lot of defense. And he's gaining all the ultimate energy from his battle skill. And that's why he's messing up my uh, entire mojo here with the shield and the battle skill from Elminster. I haven't even noticed that just now. I was like, what the heck? You see, he's he's taking the, feet, the hit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's bad. That's bad. That, that, that's not something that uh, it was meant to, to happen. But either way, we managed to get a top chest damage, guys, with a team like this, you know, and it just shows that you can use him in the Vortex and you can use different uh, different things to, to your own benefit. Now, Decrease Attack only stays in for the very first three skills. The last skill from the boss doesn't actually have the Decrease Attack, you know. We lost Adolphus. So, yeah, this is definitely less damage than, uh, than before, but I'm going to try to to do something... Uh, a bit different to change it. This was the first the first run, 33.3 million damage, where Megan was taking the hit. So I'm quickly going to check the HP. So I have a 66,000. Man, he got so much HP from this uh, from this artifact, you know? Or maybe I have HP from somewhere else too. Oh, okay. I haven't realized that I changed this maybe at some point, or I don't know what happened. I usually had defense on uh, on there, so... I'm not I'm not sure what exactly happened, but there we go. We should be much better now. So I'm not gonna keep you in the entire run here, guys. He does have the artifact now instead. So I'm gonna let an entire run play and then at the end I'll pop back in and uh, see what result we're gonna achieve now. So we're coming near the end here, guys, and we managed to do 35 million damage. I feel like he's definitely pretty, pretty good, and it does seem that the artifact just works a bit better on Adolphus. Now, I've seen a couple of things as well that uh, are kind of like putting it a bit off because the duration of the shield is not increased from the battle skill from uh, Alminster. Sometimes Adolphus is using the ultimate straight after the shield expires. So that might be a bit of a, a, bit of a tricky one, but overall, it just feels like it's, it's a better is a better thing like this. We have a better survivability. We managed to survive longer too, you know, so this is actually pretty, pretty good. I'm very, I'm very satisfied with this team. I'll be very honest with you guys. Magan as a tank, like, uh, definitely a super, uh, a super solid thing. Plus we have Elminster for decreased attack. So I'm happy with this. Now, let's take him in uh, for a try in the final thing. And that will be Arena, guys. Personally, I think he is a decent champion. I, I'm definitely going to get him. I feel like he's definitely going to be extremely helpful for the Chaos Shadow bosses and other uh, content like this. Pillar of Trials, Fame Mander, maybe, you know. Arena. I don't think I can actually get anything done in here. I don't really think they have uh, they have any gear, these, uh, these enemies. I've never actually fought any on the test server. Okay, they do have some gear. More or less. Okay, yeah. So I'll have to, to look for a team that has no gear, similar with my, uh, my team, for example, you know. I would like to, to find some heroes that are crowd controlling you with a, with a battle skill, you know. Sagamir is, is annoying. We have Elsebra in there too. So let's see. Do they have gear? These ones? No. So Sagamir will put a taunt with a, with a battle skill. Perfect. That's exactly what we actually need in here. So the thing is in the following way. If you want to cover the two back, li uh, back lines and you want to cover at least the two front lines, he needs to be positioned in the middle right here. Now I'm going to bring in a different tank to get the job done here. And uh, I'm going to bring some damage too. But I'm going to move away. 
I'm gonna move away from that uh, Mitra uh, Mitrasi, from that Vitar, so we're not actually getting uh, damaged. And I'm going to bring in, I don't know, not a Scatius. No, 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 that's that's dangerous. We're going to bring in Jorn. We're going to bring in a uh, Huldurk as well. And this this almost makes the team. Let's bring in another another support hero in here, and that will be, of course, Adolphus. Or actually, no, let's go with Gulande. Why not? Let's go like this. And let's keep the Enlightenment uh, aura. We have no gear on any of the, the characters either. But what I want to show you guys is, as an example, when Sagomir is going to try and taunt us, you know, we're all already going to have the controller uh, immunity. And that is massive for, uh, for Arena, in my opinion. I feel like it's going to be extremely, extremely helpful. Not only that you have that shield that will quickly give you a boost to stay alive, you know, because your characters might get, uh, might get uh, damaged. They might be in, uh, in danger there to die, you know, and that shield can quickly come in and, uh, and uh, save, save some of your characters, you know. That's the main thing for Arena. You want, you want to have that control immunity. Yes, decrease attack will be helpful, but that is on an ultimate. And by the time you get to that, it's not uh, necessarily very likely that you're going to, to win the fight, you know? So I just kind of like wanted to point that out a bit. It's about the positioning as well, of course. You might have to group champions. If you're bringing in jumpers, it's going to be a completely different story. So let's just say you're going to bring in a Questa you're going to bring in a, a, a caravan, right? That will be a completely different story, and I'm going to explain you exactly why. So, uh, oh, we backed out from mistake. He's not going to support them, you know? He's not going to support them, unfortunately. So we have the tank, then we have Elmister. Let's just say you don't want to necessarily keep him at the front line, right? You don't want, you don't want him here because the enemies will easily, easily get him wrecked. Now, instead... We're gonna keep Gulen the Rider at the back, and I'm gonna go for Fire Heroes. Uh, let's take in Caraman, where is he? And we're gonna go for Necrosis Heroes, and we're gonna take in Questa. They're both jumpers. Now they will go on the enemy with the lowest HP. If my jumpers are going all the way here, they're not going to get any support. No matter where I'm placing Elmister, okay? Because he has two tile okay that's the problem it's not covering the entire area so one tile two tiles three tiles out of range four tiles out of range so he's not going to be uh very good with jumpers unless the jumpers are in close proximity to him you know but guys that was all for this video let me know your thoughts in the comments down below what do you think of Almister so far you want to get a hero where do you want to use him i've showed you a couple of different places you can use him in dungeons, you can use him in pillars, you can use him in many places, but those are already kind of like common. You guys, you guys know that you're going to be able to, to use him in there. I just wanted to kind of like show you a couple of different, uh, different ideas. As usual, appreciate every single one of you guys watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you smash a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.